So every time an independent candidate has entered in what we call a presidential race, a lot has actually happened. The question has always been, do they have the capacity to mobilize national campaign? As we are headed for the campaigns eight days to go to the elections, we ask independent presidential candidate uh, Joseph Kabulete, does he have the capacity to mobilize the nation and take us to the election we need? He has been traversing the country in the recent past. A lot has happened, but we need to touch base with him and he let us know what is happening. To join this conversation, the hashtag is MoonGetNTV. Make sure that your language is not sectarian, it's not tribalistic, and it's not in any way inciting and abusive. The hashtag is MoonGetNTV. Those who have questions for the presidential candidate, Joseph Kablet, I'll be tapping those questions and asking him. And we have started this conversation at exactly 7.46. We'll go up to 8.46. That's how long we have with the presidential candidate. Good morning, Your Excellency in waiting. Good morning. <laughs> how are you doing? How have you been, Joseph? A bit good. I've mm. been fine. I've been uh, exhausted. I've been stretched. But oh, yes. um, uh, I've learned a lot. Oh, yes. And uh, it's, it's been a wonderful experience. The trail. The trail. Well, to start with, uh, do you have enough to ensure that Uganda will be, you, you'll be Uganda's 10th uh, president come uh, the 10th of May this year? Enough in form of... Uh, in form of capacity, in form of uh, strategies and, and, and structures? I believe I have um, enough in form of cap um, uh, ability. Okay. Um, um, the other things will come with time okay. because uh, capacity, as you said, independent, mm. you know, mm. uh, there is a lot that comes with the party, oh, yes. especially if it's an established party that mm. has been there for a while. Mm. Um, um, and, and even the structures, mm. they, uh, okay, not necessarily structures, but, you know, uh, the things you can do with the, 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 the liberty you have with as, an in, as a, a party candidate yes. is different from what you have as uh, an independent Mm. But um, I, I think I have every, everything that it takes. To, I, I to, have, to be the next one. To, to be the next player. Absolutely everything mm. that it takes. I have no doubt about that. And I think mm. everybody who has heard me thinks that, um, well, I would, I would make a very wonderful president. <laughs> <laughs> the 10th president. president. We have had a question that has mm. kept on coming back and forth mm. about uh, what it takes to run a presidential campaign. What does it take to run a presidential campaign now that you've been, you know, nation trotting from left, right and center in terms of uh, psycho, uh, psycho preparation, your mental stability mm. and the finance? The finance, uh, of course, is the first place that you start because mm. um, it's very expensive. Mm. Um, you need to have a team of people who are helping you do all sorts of things. A number mm. of, uh, thankfully, I've had uh, a team that has been effective and mm. e even in carrying on tasks mm. uh, for the campaign without necessarily requiring resources from us oh, yes. as a campaign. And, um, you know, they're traversing the nation. Mm. They, um, uh, of course, the whole scientific thing, mm. I've chosen to go to go the scientific way. Just but is, is it scientific from what is happening on the ground? It is not scientific, but you see, because I do not want to, there are certain things I don't want to attract. Oh, yes. So um, I chose from the beginning that mm. I do not want to attract police brutality mm. because I do not want anybody to die on my campaign trail. Right. And I do not want, uh, you know, the, the death of somebody on my conscience. Mm. My conscience is a bit too, you know, uh, sensitive for <laughs> things like that, for somebody dying. Mm. And it's, uh, you know, the that is on Kableta's head. That is on Kableta's head. Mm. I do not want that. Mm. Um, uh, so <coughs> I decided I will not do certain things. Okay. And, uh, but thankfully, um, I do not have to do them because I've made the campaign about my message. Mm. My message going ahead of my personality. So I do not have to build crowds mm. in a certain way. I have to just get a platform to propagate my message. Mm. And as long as the message goes forth um, and people understand it, mm. that's, um, uh, and I've been winning over people just mm. through the message. Okay. Because of course, uh, what people have been used to and all the campaigns have been about one and one thing only. Mm. And that is, you know, personalities, you know, uh, building personalities, you know, and of course personalities are, you know, strengthened by crowds mm. and things like that and you know numbers no, don't lie that's what they say numbers don't lie when it comes to the ballot <laughs> um, because uh, the, the, the truth is this and yes. i'll be honest with you <coughs> um if, if of course if the election is free and fair and that's a big if mm. but i'll be very honest with you it is not that difficult to get certain numbers if you have a basis of them okay uh if you move uh, with a certain number of people mm. th and there is a lot of interest mm. in the public to hear what candidates have to offer and now this is a thing that all this you know our scientific thing has denied mm. people because this elective season comes every five years mm -hmm. there are people who really want to hear 
what something new something new mm. what candidates offer because mm. their lives depend on you know all <coughs> these things mm. now um I'll, I'll give you an example i was traveling from masindi mm. i was supposed to be in luero and uh, it had been put on the list of those you know yeah, places highlighted like yes highlighted covid sensitive areas so um i canceled all my meetings in that place i had a number of meetings there so i had to cancel them because of the same reasons mm. And but uh, so I was supposed to drive past, you know, the, the drive past where yet it was on your schedule. It was yet it was my schedule. So I actually um, I just stopped mm. for a brief, uh, you know, uh, uh, bathroom break mm. somewhere at uh, just at a uh, petrol station. Yes. Now as soon as I jumped out of uh, my car to mm. go to ease myself, mm. I somebody recognizes me and mm. shouts. I hear somebody shouting, "Cabletta!" Mm. By the time I come out, they're already there. There is a crowd of people there. You have to address them, and I have to talk to them. But I told, I spoke to them for a very short time, mm. because um, uh, ultimately, you know, the people you are with, your escorts, are the ones who are going to call the police and oh, say, yes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> "Now you know." <laughs> I know, I knew it from the start. So they are the ones who are going to say, "Your it. escorts are the ones who inform police." Exactly. And, uh, yeah, and now you come, and and I don't <coughs> want, you know, because the minute they come, then you know what they do. They oh, yes. come, and so. People gather there and they're asking you questions. What's this? What are you going to do about this? Mm. And so on. And you answer them, you know, very briefly as you're looking at your watch. Mm. And uh, in a few minutes, five, ten minutes, you have to be on your way. Oh, now, yes. it's un it would be, of course, um, uh, not wise for you mm. to ignore them altogether. Oh, yes. Uh, so you have to talk to them. Mm. And uh, then they get excited. In a very short time, they're excited. Then others are gathering. Then what? You, then have, you have to, to run. Then you have to say, sorry, you people, I cannot I be here. <laughs> So I have to get out of here. But now I'm thinking now, imagine those people, mm. they, um, and they are not necessarily even, you know, but they, um, um, uh, they are not necessarily there because they are my supporters mm. ne of necessity. But the thing is, they want to hear what candidates have to offer. And they would want to sit down, ask you questions about their lives, mm. and what are you going to do if you become president, and mm. things like that. And just an opportunity to so actually hear from mm. A candidate. What do you make? What do you make of the populace in this wake of uh, of elections, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the previous elections? As a mm. former journalist, I'm sure you you've covered some elections. Mm. You've seen how far we've come mm. as a democracy. Mm. What do you make of this generation populace with regards to elections? Uh, the thing is, I think the one thing that this particular populace have that mm. they are, to be as haven't had mm. is um, um, this time there is an interest in the issues concerning the election okay now previously i would know i'll tell for instance um uh, in 2016 mm. there was a lot of i am either for this candidate or for the other candidate mm -hmm. and of course there was two strong candidates mm. and um it didn't matter mm -hmm. what came there thereafter yeah, regardless uh, regardless mm. of what everyone said mm. uh, those who are this side were this side those who are the other side were the other side mm. now there are so many people who are there to be won over <laughs> depending on what it is you say. Mm. And that's the truth. That's the honest truth. There are and, people... And how did we get there that people are no longer inclined to the political parties where they fall, but they're waiting for someone with a solution, someone who is going to address... How, how did we get to that level? I think we got there because um, uh, the, uh, people have realized how important politics is in the, their day-to-day -day lives. Okay. Because uh, there's been a lot of bite in poverty. Mm. Um, uh, the lockdown and the things that came mm. with it actually increased the level of poverty. Now, it, politics is not just a preference. The way you do prefer a football, mm. one football club over the other. Oh, yes. No, no, no. Now people see that this is not just about a preference. This is about how it is going to impact me. Oh, yes. And uh, because they have gone through a very terrible period in this. So now, when you start associating candidates mm. with your lifestyle, then you become a bit more woke. Mm. Um, in the way you uh, approach these things. It's mm. not just, yeah, you know, going this candidate. Mm. You say, okay, I would have, I want to like you, mm. but tell me what it is. Give I, me reason. Uh, give me reason. Mm. Tell me what it is. I have to benefit mm. from your candidature. Mm. Now, you have to benefit, you know, you have an ambition. You want yes. to be president. Mm. Good, good for you. But now, I want to know how I stand to benefit. As a citizen. As a citizen. Uh -huh. From your presidency. Mm. Now, that's the question people have been asking. And it's a very simple question. And... Um, uh, it's, of course, something that uh, I've been answering all over the place. Mm. And at, I've been to places where you go there, you know, want to see, of course, they, they see the Isin car and what, and so mm. the presidential candidate, so they come. And, of course, places where I was cleared to go and, you know, speak to some people mm. and so on. And um, uh, you speak to them, and they ask you questions, you answer them, and 
um, uh, you know, and they keep on asking you, you answer the questions, you tell them how they stand to benefit as mm -hmm. a people, what potential this, mm -hmm. uh, they have in the place they are in. Mm -hmm. Because this country is full of potential. So you tell them that in this place you can actually become wealthy from these things which are within mm. here within if area. you had a government that mm. enables that sort of thing. Mm. And then um, you raise hope, hope, then eventually people start seeing that actually it is possible. And mm. you're relating with things which are right there. Yes. And um, by the time you leave, people are convinced. There was a place I said I left, people said, just leave us posters. Mm. We know other candidates were are coming here. And, but we uh, got you back. Uh, no, no, and, uh, and the president <laughs> was the one coming next. Yes. He said, but don't worry. We <laughs> have decided it seems you are somebody who mm. cares about you know, the welfare mm. of people. So, and, uh, and that's the message I, uh, we put across. Kapleta, you, you, you've said one of the key issues uh, mm. that, that, that one should be ready for before they go on the campaign trail is about money. Mm. Where are you getting your money? Who is funding you? Because one candidate, and that's the president, mm. has been on record saying that there are elements, um, external elements, mm. that are um, trying to cause, you know, havoc and anarchy in the country. Mm. Mm. And they're funding some elements of change. Mm to distort the peace and all that. Who is funding you? Or if, 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 you, if you prefer to, to tell us who is funding you, what other avenues are you using to get money that are funding your campaign trails? Because it's quite a very heavy budget. It is a very heavy budget, and mm. it's been a very heavy budget. <coughs> um, I can't say that I've done everything I would have wanted to do. Mm. But here's the thing, there is no election anywhere in the world right now, mm. um, a national election, where there are no foreign Funders. Uh, foreign foreign <coughs> part, mm. foreign and local of course mm. trying to have an interest there mm. they could be countries that want to have a business um, oh, yes. in that place and uh, want to support a candidate mm. um, in exchange at some stage may perhaps for a deal mm. and there's so many things happening here there's mm. uh, a lot of things that are yet to be signed mm -hmm. in regard to the resources of this country mm. so there are so many countries that have an interest in our country in our uh, country mm. and now it's regardless of what the country is even if it was i don't know what country you can think of mm. uh, the small country it was burundi mm. there would still be foreign elements trying <coughs> to um, uh, use money to influence the elections in a particular direction mm -hmm. money and other things yes so um the fact that the president presupposes that um, the only foreign people are mm. going to be the people who are supporting him. Mm. He's joking. That, that, that's <laughs> not how it works. That's not how it works in any democracy. Come on, they short has, second. Uh, there ha they, they has to be <coughs> other people interested in other candidates. Mm. Now, the only difference is Kableta is the only one who is not funded from outside. Okay, I can't, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I, 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 that was a slip of the tongue. I yes. mean, um, <coughs> and there must be others, but Kableta is not funded from any outside source. Okay. Um, it is all within the country, it mm. is all internal, and it is all people who have bought into the ideas. Now, the thing is, when I first came out, and mm. a lot of people came and said, okay, we've known you this way and the other way, mm. so now tell us, what, do you, what is it you have for the what country? What is the agenda? What is the agenda? And they sit down and listen to you, mm. and a lot of them actually, having listened to you, mm. don't just offer support in words, they offer support in some money as well. Okay. Uh, the issue is... Um, um, how do they do that without, you know, attracting a lot, yes, of, a lot of attention? A lot of attention, and mm. some of them, of course, <coughs> have a lot to lose, so mm. they do not want um, uh, their names to be mentioned. Exactly. Even the Financial Intelligence Authority. Uh, th there is nothing wrong with what they are doing as mm. far as the Financial Intelligence Authority is concerned. Mm. No, to you. Uh, to you. Because your accounts keep growing. The thing is, um, <laughs> um, uh, the Financial Intelligence Authority is supposed to be dealing with uh, money that comes from yes. outside laundering mm. and what, mm. not people contributing to their, Within the country. To, to their favorite presidential candidate. Mm. Unfortunately, <coughs> they extend their arm in there because they are there to uh, influence mm. how money is spent. Mm. Because the one thing Museveni fears in this election is money. Because money can topple him so easily. Because it's the w only advantage he would have on anybody. Other than that, people are tired of everything he has done. People mm. are tired of all the things he said. Nobody believes him any longer. Uh, I hope I'm not getting you in trouble by saying this. No, 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 it's it, fine. It's fine. Mm. Um, uh, nobody, so the only advantage he has mm. is superior finance. Now, he's so scared that somebody can come and get that. Mm. And now once they have that, he's, he's finished. Regardless of the rigging machinery and all that, mm. once a candidate has a certain war chest of money mm -hmm. in this country, the rigging will not help you. Because you have an opportunity to, to get uh, for, for, for all to influence. sorts of influence, mm. all sorts of <coughs> platforms mm. to do things that other people do to build teams mm. um, that he uses, of course, the machinery to build uh, in terms of everything he has to offer jobs mm. and so on. Now, imagine uh, you could build such a machinery, have people all across the country, mm. and have them funded to a certain degree. 
and so on. Now we are doing a lot of that thing just through voluntarism, mm. uh, people volunteering. And they have been tremendous, to be honest. But um, some of them spending their resources. Mm. I've been places where I find uh, billboards of Kableta and mm. I, had, I didn't contribute a coin. But it's there. But it's there. Mm. And uh, the people in that place who, um, you know, bought into the message, mm. Bill did that and got into the... So imagine if I could actually afford afford to do all those. So the one thing Museven is dreadfully scared of mm. in this election is another candidate having money because it's his only advantage. So okay. that takes me to the question of commercialization of politics. Mm. You've been traversing the entire nation. Mm. How bad has this merchandising of the vote mm. affected people's mindset from the real issues mm. to the money? Now the thing is, <coughs> people are not stupid. They know who has money and who doesn't have money. So they uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's I'll, I'll give it like this: if um, if 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 there's a beautiful girl there yes. and. Um, <coughs> We are both interested in her, mm. and let's say one of us has money, and the other has has has, well, has superior game. Let's mm. say um, she will know. She will know this one only has money to offer. Mm. This one has ideas to offer. Oh yes, and she will receive. You know, uh, both best, and wave. Uh, b b based on that. So, yeah. um, uh, if let's say Chamagere is mm. the broke guy who has game. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then, but with ideas. With ideas. Yes. So she, she is not going to ask <coughs> mm. for something from you because she knows that you do not have it. Oh, yes. But then she knows you have something else to offer. Oh, yes. That is more than the money. Yes. Now, uh, if Kableta is the guy who has the money, mm. for instance, mm. when I come, she's not going to expect anything. She just says, I want this, I want this, you know, I want my rent paid. So, the so money will that, so, Yeah, exactly. So now when Kableta goes to campaign, mm. I am the guy with ideas. I'm the guy with game. Mm. So I don't need a lot of money. Of course, um, uh, there will be people uh, here and there, you mm. know, and they say, totally can deal sanitizer. Mm. Mm. And by sanitizer, they mean something to drink. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> sanitize the other. I don't know where this language you came from. You picked the language. Of, that's <laughs> the language of the street. That's the language of the street. That's how we thrive. Of course, I picked it because I've been mm. there looking for books. <laughs> so, um, th but they know that your limitations. Oh, they, yes. can, they know your limitations. Oh, yeah. But they're interested in hearing what you have to say. The ideas. They have questions. Mm. And they have the Actually, if you engage them, they can keep you there for three hours. It's just that you don't have that time. Wow. But they have interesting questions, mm. um, uh, very pertinent questions mm. about their life, about this. How come this is like this? Mm. How this is this? How come ABC? Mm. You know, you go to the village mm. and somebody asks you a question and you're shocked. How come we sell electricity to Kenya, mm. but their tariffs are cheaper than ours? And we don't still have a national grid reaching the villages. Yes, okay, mm. that's a different story. Mm. But then how come the electricity is cheaper than ours? Yet they buy a lot of electricity. Mm. Some, okay, at least some electricity from here. Yes. Now, that's what you would expect from somebody like in you. In Kampala. Yes. yes. Mm. But then you find that in the village and you look and say, excuse me, mm. and somebody has asked you that and he's serious. So they're knowledgeable in the, a way. Exactly. And um, the, the thing is, I have, I set out from the beginning mm. to, um, to, 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 to speak to Ugandans mm. like they are intelligent. Yes. Because they are, you see, eh? and that I set out from the beginning to speak to them like they know what they want. Because mm. they do. Now, the thing is, a lot of people think they don't. Yes. And a lot of people think that you can scat over the issues and just, you know, and you jump and so yeah, 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 jump and, you know, just say a few things here and there. Actually, they don't want that. They want real issues. Because they have realized that this is not just about one person over the other. I told you. It's a like, collective approach. This, mm. No. But this is about my life. Mm. Whoever of these people, let's say, um, uh, happen to win, mm. where do I stand to benefit? That's actually the, how people are looking at it. They're benchmarking so on, they're on their own regardless life. Regardless of the money. In, regardless of the money. Mm. Now, if somebody comes with money, of course they need it. Yes, they'll they, take they, it. They, they, they'll take it. But they'll vote. Uh, but they'll vote according to other things. Okay. Not necessarily. The, and by the way, that has really changed. That's one thing that has changed now. Mm. Because I found places where there's been money spent. Mm. Um, and, uh, and, you know, somehow f the, 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 the electoral roadmap mm. has put me in and around the same place mm. as the president. Mm. So um, either I am leaving a place he's coming mm. or I'm coming to a place he's leaving. Mm. So you've been, to, you've been to places where people have spent, and not necessarily himself, but even some of, you know, his, his people. His people, yes. His people who have, uh, you who know. Who buy his ideas. Yes, mm. and have thrown around, you know, money and so mm. on. And then the people who are asking questions and very pertinent questions are what are people who are even dressed um, uh, in the entire NRM garb mm. and um, uh, picked some money, but mm. they are totally not. I've, I've had 
candidates at all sorts of levels mm -hmm. from LCs up to MPs Councilors and what councillors and so on who are in certain parties but they're interested by ideas mm. and they are my supporters mm. and they will come dressed in a certain way in mm. certain colors and mm. I don't care about that but money uh, ideas money ideas mm. let's see okay money you give us money that's all you have to offer mm. Mm -hmm. and uh you know that's all the incumbents have to, has to offer okay now we know that we have your money <laughs> Please, uh, you, you had better be on your way. Um, uh, and now, then somebody else comes, let's mm. hear your ideas, 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 ideas. Mm. I think I prefer these ideas. Mm. And at the end of the day, actually, there's people who are making up decisions. And um, I, that's what I find interesting. Interesting. About um, you've been running a campaign making a case for the financial liberations of Ugandan. To mm. bring it closer to my... Yes. What have you seen on the campaign trail and what is this financial liberation you're talking about? Oh no, people have been... People have had their hands tied. Mm. I mean, as far as everything they've wanted to do to earn a living. Mm. Um, uh, if you talk to businessmen here, yep. they will tell you how punitive um, the taxes are mm -hmm. and how they make it very difficult for anybody mm. to actually um, thrive mm -hmm. in the business environment. Mm. So those who have thrived in the business environment in this country have actually had to swim through the they shark, to swim. Yeah. Um, um, you know, um, uh, through the crocodile infested waters. Mm. So uh, they are not liberated. They are not free. They don't feel the sense of freedom. They know that... Um, uh, there is a regime that can come and pick down on any business interest you have mm. and uh, take it out for the people who are privileged, you understand? Mm -hmm. So somebody comes and starts, uh, let's say the people who started sports betting and so on, and then they build it to a certain level. Mm. Then they say, okay, now that there's a lot of money here, now thank you very much for all the groundwork, now it mm. belongs to a certain class of people, privileged mm -hmm. class of people. So there is no liberation really, number one. Uh, so the, the one of it is uh, punitive taxes. Mm. Um, uh, of course, there are, there are so many other issues. The other is uh, uh, the, the absence of markets, uh, the destruction of the agriculture sector, mm. um, uh, the uh, absence of you know uh, commercialization of the agriculture sector. So many people have tried so many things in the agriculture sector and they have failed. Mm. And uh, usually they fail them using things like laws, you know, the coffee law, um, mm. uh, you know, the vanilla law, mm. which get something which was thriving and actually kill it using the law. And the, the, the law is supposedly to regulate. That's, that's the thing they always yes, use. Yes. But they kill a thriving industry by just creating a law which is unnecessary. So how are you fixing that, Mr. Kabila? By removing those unnecessary laws mm. and actually putting uh, you know, uh, systems that make it so easy for those things to thrive. For instance, vanilla was thriving. Mm. It thrived for the one season. It threatened to do one thing that the, the, this government doesn't want to do, mm. at least the president. Giving people money. Giving rural people money. Now, if somebody threatens to give rural people money, mm. wherever I'm saying, even if he was on a sick bed, you'd come <laughs> out of there and come and say, who is waking up my people? I mean, uh, who is showing them? Because they ha his idea has been to keep them in despondence. So you believe this trade. government wants to keep people poor so that it can manage them better? This president, I mm. don't know about government, because government includes so many people. Uh, it's a system. But I know it for a fact mm. that this president will do anything in his power to make sure that people remain poor. Mm. Um, and that but he has there. said the economy has grown, he has, he has built infrastructure, good <laughs> roads that they can take the, the, the food to the markets. He has, he has educated people according to his programs, the ones he has broke through. <laughs> the UPDF is one of the professional armies that no longer, you know, Jackson takes things from the people. These are ideas. He has always said, this is how far we were and this is where we are. When he came in power, on quote, um, the Treasury had 86 million Ugandan shillings. Today it boasts of trillions also. So the Kabletta money he wants to give the people, where are we going to drive no, it from? Of course you, you can't be saying that because mm. um, uh, how trillions in what? What's the, our, what's our, how, much, how big our debts as mm. a nation compared to nice. what, we, uh, what we have as in the Treasury? Of mm. course they are. And that's after 1999-2000. Mm. We were excused all the loans. Mm. You know, previously they would say, are ah, these loans were accumulated in previous governments? Yes. No, they were accumulated in this government <laughs> because we were brought to almost zero, okay? Yes. So zero, um, uh, you know, zero debt. But we have mm. accumulated it to something uh, uh, approaching 50 and past, past of our GDP mm. in these last 20 years mm -hmm. under <coughs> whose government, under his government. So there is not, we are actually, our balance of trade mm. when he came in power mm. was a, a positive 30 million dollars. A positive 30 million dollars and it went that up to about 1988 mm. 89 
uh, by 90, it was a negative 30 million. Mm. Now it's a negative 3 point something billion dollars. That's bad. That's bad. That's even worse than Burundi. Okay? Very bad. Now, um, um, there are so many things that mm. have gone on. And what is it that causes our balance of trade to be? Because, we are, first of all, we are even importing mm. agricultural produce, which should not be something we are importing as a country, because that's the one place we that's have... That's a backbone agriculture. Uh, number one, that's mm. the one place we have a comparative advantage over any country I can think of. Mm. This year, we've actually had as many as three seasons, because the rain has been on almost oh, yes. all year. Mm. Can you imagine three seasons of maize in one year? Mm. That's unthinkable. All, every other country has one season oh, now. Yeah. So, of course, usually we have two. Now... But we still import rice, mm. okay? We, we import Irish. We import <laughs> Irish potatoes. <laughs> we import groundnuts mm. from Tanzania. Can mm. you imagine? Mm. Um, uh, groundnuts. Mm. That is African Confederation <laughs> trades. <And now. laughs> so the thing is, e everything <coughs> has gone the opposite direction. Mm. We cannot have um, jobs for our youth mm. when we have our current power tariffs, okay? okay? Because the average price for, let's say, local consumption, mm. Uh, in the world is zero point one four one dollars. Mm. Uganda's price is zero point one eight one. Um, the, the other one is the average. Mm. So a Ugandan pays as much money, um, you know, for u utilizing power mm. as somebody in Israel, as somebody in Sweden. These are countries that are so far ahead of us. Yet Kenya Yet takes it down. Kenya takes it down. Tanzania takes it even lower. Mm. Rwanda takes it down. Okay. Has that affected our industry and manufacturing Ex grades as a nation? So much, so much. Because even industries were running away from Kenya, mm. and the excuse they were giving is high power tariffs. Mm. We cannot attract them here because how ours are higher. Because um, the industrial, that was for domestic consumption, mm. the industrial one, the average is 0 0.12, um, 121 mm. um, uh, on the world, the world average. Ours is like 0 0.4 something 0 0.14 something so you see even the industries and mm. now that's the one thing that will attract industries and there is no reason for that mm. because we produce 1200 megawatts um, uh, of, of, of electricity mm. we consume just over 650 at peak mm. so there is still a lot of electricity left after and our is, yeah. after our consumption surplus, yes. and uh, even considering even taking into account the one we sell to Tanzania and uh, Kenya and so mm. on we still have a lot left over, so, so much left mm. over. <coughs> Actually, so much that it costs us. In 2018, it cost Uganda 30 billion mm. shillings. To Maintenance. To store mm. the electricity <coughs> which has been generated mm. and is not used. Mm. But then... That Yet villages uh, don't have electricity. Villages don't have electricity. Those w that have, it is very expensive, expensive. and it is very um, unsustainable for the normal villager. And talking so about uh, electricity, you, 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 you've you broke it down a little well. Mm. Now let's talk about taxes. What are some of the policies that you coming up with that are going to waiver some taxes off the Ugandans because the tax burden is heavy, like you're saying, mm. and the investors cannot get here because the tariffs are high or taxes are crazy. Mm. What does the presidential candidate Joseph Kableta have in stock? Okay, first of all, um, generally, mm. my plan is to reduce taxes considerably. And I mean considerably. But From that up to the bottom of the pyramid? Uh, well, to mm. somewhere there. Mm. Uh, and that is not going to affect the amount of money we get as a nation for reasons ABC. Mm. First of all, A, uh, there is a lot of privileged people who belong to a certain family who do not pay taxes. Mm. And they are the ones in charge of all the businesses that make all the money. How do you know that? I know it. I mean, we, we exported $1.3 billion worth of gold. Go and check how much tax gold exports got. Mm. On, it's, it's common knowledge. Mm. I mean, okay, not common. I mean, uh, but it's knowledge that can be searched. Mm. How much was paid in taxes from gold exports? It was our single biggest export mm. last year, mm. $1.3 billion. Very little, or, or not, no tax absolutely paid. Mm. Why? Because the people involved in the gold trade are people who are collected, privileged. privileged. Mm. Uh, there are so many things now that they, they extended the privilege to so many agricultural things. Mm. Uh, they extended it to Vanilla, they, they have extended it now to coffee. Every time you see a law, the purpose is to extend it. Now, uh, extend the privilege mm -hmm. of the, to certain people. Mm -hmm. Now, they went into sugar cane, you know, growing because uh, sugar, you know, is, you know, a very, a, a, a somehow a business which is of very personal interest for mm. the people at the top. Mm -hmm. So now they've gone into sugar cane plant. And every time they go there, they impoverish everybody in it. You see, the other day, uh, one of my people in Kaliro told me we were we are, we are having uh, you know, some activity there. Mm. And you go and find a line of trucks, 
you know, of, of trucks wait out, waiting outside the factory to sell their sugar cane to the factory. Mm. And um, you ask them how much are they going to give you for the and a truck of sugar, they are going to give him 50,000. Mm -hmm. That's if he's lucky to have it bought. And the whole of it. Yes. And there was a time that a turn, 2017, was 170,000 shillings. Mm. And there were people who were making money. I was talking to some guy who told me he took himself through school through ju using just two acres of sugar cane and mm. took himself through all the way through university. Mm. Now, he told me after these people came and regulated, you mm. know, and uh, put agents and so on, now he has four acres. He can't even afford his younger sister's school fees. Yet the two acres were good enough to take him all the way through. So everything has been... Those uh, are the laws you want? Now, mm. first of all, removal of middlemen. There's a lot of middlemen mm. now. But I'll tell you this. Mm. Um, so the first one I told you, remove the privileged people. Yes. And make sure everybody pays taxes. Okay. So there's nobody who is Regardless special. of where you come regardless from. Regardless of who you are, mm. regardless of where you come from, what relationship you pay have. Pay taxes. President Kableta, mm. you pay taxes. Mm. Everybody. Now Your Excellency, I'll pay. Yeah, uh, you, everyone. <laughs> yes. Because you're paying now. Yes. Now, when I do that, <coughs> then suddenly the amount of money that we pay in taxes increases. Mm. Then suddenly, um, you know, I, I have the leeway to actually reduce taxes for certain people. Mm. Because now they are, they are the privileged people who are non-taxpayers mm. out. Secondly, tax holidays for foreign companies which are, do, not de do not deserve the tax holidays. Okay? Mm. Now we lose a trillion shillings. Mm -hmm. A year on average in tax holidays. In tax holidays. Mm. Now, if, if I got that trillion shillings and put it right back where it's supposed to be, mm. and we do not have those unnecessary tax holidays, then I have some leeway to reduce taxes. And it's people. a tool to, to, to attract investors in this country. I'll get to that. Okay. Um, uh, thirdly, mm. there are s only l uh, uh, less than 20% of mm. Ugandans who are actually involved in income tax. 80% are off the grid. Mm. They are not there. You are kind. They, are, they, are, they are not anywhere on mm. the income tax grid. Mm. Why is that? First of all, because they are very poor. Yeah. Secondly, because um, uh, the, the whole grid has also been drawn in Some a Some just capacity. decide not to pay because they don't see the return to, to First the First of all, the reason they do not pay, mm. yes, you've said one of these, they don't see the return. Mm. Secondly, they, 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 the taxes are very punitive. Mm. So it makes it easy for people to steal them. Mm. Now, there are certain tariffs that you put which make it make people have no choice but to steal. Mm. So when even some when somebody is not a thief, mm. I remember way back, way way back when I used to be in some you know stay in some place, some some get some ghetto somewhere, I would go for um, to a, to take away mm. to you know have uh, get something to eat. Mm. Now this gentleman, I so I noticed one day he's stealing power. Mm. So I told him, why are you stealing power? Um, uh, don't he said that I have no choice. If I actually paid the power. Um, I would be working for, uh, for, for, for UEB mm, at the time. Yes. He said, I would be working for UEB. I wouldn't make a single shilling in profit if I paid the full, full, full mm. power tariff. Mm. Now, when you see something like that, you know something is wrong. Because if when somebody... When Ugandans go wrong. Uh, <coughs> yes, because he has no choice. There are people who are thieves by choice. Mm. Then now him is telling me I have no choice. I have a choice of either... Um, close steal power? Clo clo a steal power and survive in o this or city. Or close shop. Or close shop mm. and go back somewhere. <laughs> and so I, I, I don't think that's a very good choice for anybody. But now wh when it gets to that, mm. then you realize that there's something wrong in the, in the whole structure. That's what you want to Then change. I went and asked mm. um, the, uh, somebody at Umeme, mm. uh, or UEB at the time. Yes. So I asked them that, why are the power tariffs so high? Why must people be forced mm. to, like people in takeaways, you know, yes. the, why must they, you know, steal tax? I mean, you're losing a lot of money through the stealing, yet mm. you could reduce the rates and I actually mean, people pay. Can afford then the guy told me that, you see, that there are so many people who cheat. Mm. So what, what happens if, let's say, we are planning to collect a million, sheet, a million dollars, mm. I'm giving an example, as a target, as as, as a target mm. and yet we collect 900, what do they do? Instead of seeing why the money is low, mm. other than they increase, they just increase. Now, they increase, let's say, by 50%. And now, if they increase by 50%, you would expect they would get 1.5 now. No, they get 1.1. Because other people have said, okay, we have no choice but to join the stealers. <laughs> so now so it you is, lose. It's, it's, so you, it's a self, you know, uh, people pushing people to the wall. Yet, it, it's the same thing with the taxes. Mm. Yet, you can make them very comfortable taxes and mm. then anybody who cheats them is a thief so then you can deal with them accordingly not a survivor but, but a thief you so deal with thieves now now you deal with thieves mm. not deal with survivor like that gentleman mm. of the takeaway mm. who is just trying to survive now we make the taxes lower and make it easier for everybody to pay because first of all the taxes that you people pay in mm. the corporate sector of uh, uh pay as you earn lst uh, mm. all that. Mm. first of all pay as you mm. earn pay as you earn 
um, uh, 30% of your income mm. goes in there. But that's a tax that can be reduced considerably. Mm. For especially, okay, I'll give an example. Mm. I, I, I targeted that anybody earning 600,000 and low is exempt from payers you earn. Right now, the threshold is 235. Mm -hmm. But I can increase it to 600,000. Okay. Exempt from payers you earn. Mm. Now, from 600,000, let's say to a million, mm. maybe like 20, not 30 percent. Mm. Now, the 30 percent comes at a point where we realize that, okay, um, um, uh, Chama Gero here has a lot of you know, money. Mm. Even if we take off 30 percent, he will still have enough to survive. He will be comfortable. He will still be at least comfortable. Mm. Now, you can go to 30 percent. Mm. But now, a teacher is getting 300,000. Mm -hmm. You're taking 30 percent of his 300,000 mm. and you're taking off so many other fees mm. and at the end of the day he's getting very little money and it's affecting the education sector it's affecting the students it's affecting everybody because he's not having a living wage so we so those are things we can do but i was telling you first of all remove the privileged people mm -hmm. secondly um uh, take remove the tax holidays mm. which are necessary mm. thirdly increase the tax base because there's only 20 percent people so now people uh, will be compliant uh -huh, they'll uh, pay uh -huh. increase the tax base mm -hmm. by first of all bringing the people in agriculture mm -hmm. now when you get back the industry mm -hmm. the the um uh, the uh, agri agriculture business mm -hmm. and now people are getting money from agriculture as we are going to do mm -hmm. and getting quite an amount of money because you know it's a very rich sector i'll tell you that in kenya um uh, the farmers through their cooperatives yes they're richer than people I, they have savings mm -hmm of six billion dollars. Their cooperative banks are stronger than some institutions uh -huh. indeed. Uh -huh. They have six billion dollars. Mm. That is their savings. And they have assets of five billion dollars. Farmers. Farmers. Now, between, th between their savings and their assets, they can finance the entirety of Uganda's budget in one year. Okay. Now, th and that's farmers. So <laughs> that is very painful. Let's, because of time, I, time is not on our side. Let's mm. talk about your experience that you've gone through the campaign trail. But have you allow me to just add one more thing to finish. On, on, on that, on the financial okay. policy. Okay. Mm. So now, if we bring the farmers mm -hmm. to be as rich as our neighbors, okay. and we have more advantages here, mm. more arable soil and so on, yes. then they can contribute to the taxes. Then mm. suddenly, instead of 20% of the people paying taxes, perhaps you have 80% of the people paying, paying mm. taxes. Because so now they have the money. Mm. Now that means your tax base has increased. Mm. Now that means I can reduce taxes considerably for the, f for the trader here mm. who has been carrying the entirety mm. of the load of taxes. I can reduce taxes, as I've told you, for mm. people. And I have leeway because now there's a huge tax base. Mm. We can reduce taxes and then collect more money. And then we can charge those people who are not paying taxes, not as survivors, but as thieves, because we have reduced the taxes. Where are they and stealing? They are, some of them are stealing for survival. That's mm. my point. Mm. Now, when we've reduced the taxes so much, mm -hmm. it will no longer be for survival. You can, be, you can pay your tax, you can be tax compliant, and still have a running, business. thriving business. So you do not have to steal. And mm. then, of course, when you deal with the monster, uh, when you, you know, uh, mm. because progressively Shucks. deal with the monster of mm. corruption, mm. then they also start seeing where the taxes are going. Then now they have motivation to pay taxes because mm. they are lower, because they can see where they are going, mm. and because they can pay taxes and still thrive as businessmen. And then everybody is happy. Okay, that is the liberation, financial liberation from Kableta. Please uh, give us your feedback on Twitter. The hashtag is uh, Morning at NTV. I'm picking a couple of questions and I'll be asking them to Kableta. It's a very interesting conversation. It's 23 minutes past 8 in the morning. Kableta, you've been on the campaign trail. Have you, have you seen tear gas? Have you, how has your relationship and security operatives been? I've told you, uh, with the exception of one place where I came, where I actually saw one tear gas canister. I saw canister. you losing yeah. cool that day. One tear gas canister. Mm. And um, that was Masidi. Mm. And because there was a very unreasonable uh, DPC there, mm. the thing is, I, I know what DPCs have been under, the, the instructions they are under. Mm. So, um, but that place, I actually just wanted to go and have something in the, in the town. Mm. Because I was scheduled to be there and it was... Um, uh, it was the only time actually I had to be in that place mm. in, the, in, 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 the, in the municipality. Of course, I asked for consul. I've been there again because mm. after that time I asked for another time and I went there and this time it wasn't as bad. But it was the only time I came close mm. to tear gas. And as soon as I saw the first canister, mm. first <laughs> I told my people we go. This is it. Uh, let's get out of here. Mm. Now, as I've told you before, I do not want... That tear gas is dangerous to people's you know, lungs mm. and so on. Mm. I have told people before that I do not want anybody to suffer injury or mm. worse still death mm. on my campaign trail. Mine is about ideas. 
I can propagate my ideas without mm. putting people in harm's way. Okay. And if it is about ideas, there are so many platforms mm. I can use. Of course, I would prefer, much prefer, mm. that we didn't have this excuse of COVID to block campaigns. Mm. And we can go and actually organize a rally mm. and speak to people, let's say, for 45 minutes. Without in that time, any effect. Uh, in, yeah, with, without any, you know, as it was to mm. five years ago. Mm. In that time, I would have a lot of time to speak to them. Mm. But now I've had to improvise in different ways. So. But I d the reason I have not had tear gas is mm. because I have deliberately set out to make sure that it is not a factor of my campaign. Okay. And um, it was just an unfortunate incident that it happened to me once. And um, it hasn't happened to me again. I do not anticipate it will happen to me again. Mm. Um, and just because the mine is about the message, the okay. issues, the message, nothing more. The no message. So. Mm. Your opponents in the NRM have accused some of the independent candidates like you lacking mm. a significant manifesto. Uh, oh, significant basis for your campaign. Is that true? Oh, my God. If anybody in NRM accuses somebody of not having a significant manifesto, mm. then, I do, then this world is, uh, the, world, the end of the world is about, because they, their manifesto is full of rubbish, <coughs> is full of rubbish, full of mm. things that are not implementable, full of empty promises. And, and they're saying that you're full of conspiracy theories that will never materialize. Um, well, they can say what they want, but the truth is, um, my manifesto, mm. Um, uh, is very workable and mm. very, and you know, I did, because I know not everybody is going to be reading mm. 50 pages of a manifesto. So I did the long manifesto, but that's mm. to guide me. Then I did a, br a, a, a halfway manifesto, mm. which is like 20 something pages. Mm -hmm. That's, that was the one for consumption. It's the one I launched mm. in Gulu um, uh, on 10th of November. Mm. Then I did a b abridged version of a manifesto, very mm. brief, mm. with just action points, action mm. points in every sector. Uh, every key sector action points, so uh, education, health, tourism, uh, agriculture, and so on. Just what are the problems, what are the strengths, mm. what are we going to do? An abridged one, so which is just a working document. And mm. that one I just leave, I ju I've given mostly to our campaign agents. Okay. Because it's a very brief document, a few pages. It can be processed. They, uh, they can be processed mm. by anyone, so it's just our campaign agents who mm. read what we have to do there mm. and know what cabletas financial liberation is all about. Kapolita, let's talk about the oil. What's your plan for the oil industry as a nation? Oh, oil. Uh, That is the oil in Bunyoro to avoid the situation where it turns into a gas. What's your plan like? No, it's not just in Bunyoro, by the way. It's mm. as ex ex it, there's a lot of, now the, most of it actually is coming from Pakwach. Oh, yes. So um, uh, there's, there's a lot of oil, by the way, and a lot more is are yet to be discovered. Mm. Now, um, um, if, if we actually have, because a lot of agreements have already been entered as mm -hmm. it is, Okay, mm. and uh, I've been trying to look at some of the things, the, the, the knowledge available on that in that area. Uh, there's been talk of the refinery. I don't know how feasible. I, I, I haven't gone into the details of how feasible that is, mm. but the whole extracting of the oil and so on, the 24 billion dollars that we need, and mm. how shares have been sold here and there by different companies mm -hmm. from the first one, and people have been making money off our oil before it even comes off, comes mm -hmm. out of the ground. You know that. Mm. So um, I've been looking at some of the agreements. Of course, they, they are secret. Nobody is going to give you um, what the oil agreements are about. But the one thing I would want is, first of all, to make sure that um, it's a national resource mm -hmm. because it has been personalized. We are selling crude oil outside of this country. That one is a fact. Mm -hmm. You see, the thing is, um, they try to conceal these things, but you cannot sell anything in the world right now, and it is not known. It okay. will be tracked. It will be tracked mm. because uh, there are people who gauge how much crude oil is being sold. Uganda is one of the countries named there mm. as crude oil exporters. Uh, Kenya is there as well, but the difference between them and us is that they declare mm. their oil. Ours is done secretly. Um, and trucks are moving out of the oil wells and going and mo moving. And uh, of course, I wrote about that in one of my runs oh, yes. and put me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> but it's the truth. Mm. Um, um, so first of all, we want the oil to be a national resource. Mm. Secondly, we want the people who are around th th that place mm. to be beneficiaries rather than net losers. Because okay. what has been happening with all oil-rich places, you remember the Ogoni people oh, yes. in Nigeria and mm. Ken Sarowiwa, mm. and how these foreign companies come and destroy everything in the place. People cannot even have agriculture and what. Mm. And of course, they use corrupt politicians. Now, we want the people in the places where there is oil. Um, currently the Albertine region, but also a bit of Pakwach mm. and other places to be net gain 
people gaining. So they have to benefit fast. Benefit, yeah, benefit. <coughs> um, first mm. of all, in terms of jobs, in terms of you know, there are so many jobs to be done in mm. those places. Um, uh, small time contracting and things like that, so that they do not because it's for the good of everybody. Remember when they were setting oil wells on fire in Nigeria? Yes. So you need people to be happy. You need people to be beneficiaries. As long as they are not, you are in serious trouble. The people where the mm. resource is coming from, and then we need it to be a national resource. So that we know that the oil of this country. What is do you mean by now? It's not a national resource. Oh, but um, every, I mean you've had the president saying my oil. Um, right there. <laughs> we're, we're going to take a break for now. It's still a morning at NTV. Keep your feedback coming in. Just to sample a little bit, Martin N. Nyaroki on Twitter. Um, he goes that for anyone who is voting issues, uh, Joseph Kableta is your man. However, let's talk about. Um, um, the first and threats and the opposition resolve on both sides taking the back, uh, the seat by force, regardless. And um, the violence talk is going to talk about it. Kigongo, a theorist that says, um, Kabletta knows what he's talking about, how he's planning uh, to get the Balokole vote and all that. And um, this one is saying, how is Kabletta planning to get us to vote without masks? I'm Andrew Chamagero. I want to our and send today we are very gratified to have a presidential candidate, an independent presidential candidate, His Excellency in waiting, uh, Joseph Kableta, and we're discussing a couple of issues. Well, Mr. Kableta, without any further ado, because of time, mm. if you elected president, how would you address the questions of entrenching doctrine of separation of powers, the rule of law, professionalization of the army and Uganda's regional and international relations? Uh, of course, that's a big issue because that has been the one thing that, um, let's say, this government has completely turned the other way. Okay. First of all, laws have just been uh, documents that they use to propagate themselves. They have not been something they respect at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Secondly, everything Museveni has done in his 35 years mm. um, in power, 35 years, 26 this month, mm -hmm. has been about one thing only that is having all power vested in the office of the presidency, mm -hmm. or rather in himself. Mm -hmm. In other words, turning Uganda into a family and him as the Semaka. <laughs> um, that, and he has done that so skillfully that mm -hmm. you can see parliament have been emasculated, you can see the judiciary are very scared, you can see every institution in the country is subservient to him. There is mm -hmm. no form of independence. Mm -hmm. Now, we cannot aspire to have all the you know, uh, economic things that I've, I speak about here, unless we first of all have a, a separation of powers, mm. um, uh, freedoms, basic freedoms as, mm. a, as a nation, mm. we have to give parliament back its bite. Mm. We have to give the judiciary back their bite. They have mm. to be in position to make decisions that hurt the executive without fear mm. of, of be, uh, with, without, uh, without fear of being um, mm. uh, targeted financially especially. Okay. Because what they fear is uh, you make a certain decision, they can destroy your finances in a short time. Mm. And they use that a lot. They use the fear for that. Mm. So we have to be, Kabilet has to know when he's president mm. that they, a, a judge can rule against me and there are no consequences. And you respect it. And I respect it mm. and there are no consequences mm. for him or for his family mm. or for his security or mm. his finances. Um, uh, we have to give parliament back its bite. All those things add a lot of value to a nation. We have to give people back their freedoms. Mm. Uh, to express themselves. Media, I'm a media person. Mm. And I, 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 the whole thing about freedom of media is at the core of all my thinking. And actually, all freedoms are actually based on freedom of media. Oh, yes. Because when the media is gagged, then um, all the other things um, are not exposed. Mm. And then um, they get away you mm. know, with a lot of things. So all those things have to be done. Although my issue is mostly in the financial area, mm -hmm. putting money in people's pockets. Mm. Um, uh, by reducing, you know, uh, the, the things that they have been taking the money mm. away. Mm. But the issues of rule of law, the issues of separation of powers mm. are very dear to me. The issues of giving certain institutions their power back, mm. okay? And I'm talking about, uh, for instance, religious institutions. Mm. I'm talking about traditional institutions, which are there, but they do not feel, and I've visited some of these people, and you know that they don't feel, because in they, charge. they don't feel in charge. Mm. They feel that they have an overbearing hand mm. Mm. over them. So they don't feel that they are in charge of anything. Mm. So um, um, you go and they are, they are, you know, murmurings and so on because everybody is scared. They are, you find murmurings among the Muslims and mm. discontent among ABC mm. and so on. And yet they have their institution there and supposed to have its power and so on, but has been taken away, mm. you know, through threats. You through want to bridge back then? All of you have your power back because mm. you are a religious institution, mm. regardless of whatever. Mm. You are a traditional institution. Have your power, and there is no power without money. Mm. You see, eh? 
Uh, and so have all your money, your um, your, the, your ability mm. to get your things, you know, your, what is yours to become yours. Mm. That's what gives you power. So all those people. So at all these institutions, mm. as, mu as much power as possible is divested out of the office of the president. Mm. So that now we remain to making policies which are going to make people rich. Okay. Mm. Um, are you satisfied with the Electoral Commission's election preparations to the election day? Now, the thing is, uh, it's not for me to be satisfied mm. any more than as a footballer, you'd say, are you satisfied with the referee's preparations? Mm -hmm. That's his business. <laughs> okay. uh, for yours is to make sure you're fit, mm. uh, you're, you know, you're in the right you're state ready. of mind, mm. right, and so on. So, um, uh, of course, I know there will be, the, the electoral com they, they, there's nothing they have done right from the beginning. Mm. Um, uh, you know, there's confusion in this, confusion in that. Uh, the rules are made as we go along. And, uh, then why are you a part of a game where the referee is, is, is in, it doesn't seem to be, you know, balanced? Uh, you, you have, haven't you watched football games when the referee is very biased? Have you watched people walking off the pitch? That's mm. a lack of professionalism. We used to do it way back in the mm. village. They award the penalty against you and you walk off the pitch. Have you mm. seen it in the Premier League? <laughs> uh, haven't you seen... You stay on the pitch. Haven't you seen biased refereeing? Mm. But the people stay on the pitch because that's, pro that's professionalism. Mm. Then you can go and seek adjudication afterwards that's and say that, okay. you know, that red card was unfair, this and so on. Mm. Um, uh, so the, the answer I always give people when they tell me, why are you in a race when you think it's not going to be free and fair? Mm. I say that um, uh, I've been in university and, you know, this lecturer doesn't like me. He's not going to mark me fairly. But, I, but I cannot say I'm not going to sit for the exam because I fail by just not sitting. But at least let me go and sit even if I do not expect to be judged fairly. Role. I go and sit the exam mm. as best as I can. Now, I can then go and complain to the Senate and say, this guy, I, uh, you know, perhaps we went for the same girl. He doesn't like me, mm. so he's not marking me fairly. Then they can get my paper and give it to another lecturer. Uh, to mark. Uh, to mark. But Cap if I don't sit for the exam, I fail you from fail. the start. Kablete, lastly, what do you plan to do if you're not successful in the polls in, uh, on Jan uh, 14th? And will you go to court or you'll join the winners and wish them good or you'll join opposition? Um, uh, join opposition, I am in opposition. <laughs> <laughs> no, as a party. Yeah, as, as a party. Mm. The thing is, it depends on mm. how the election goes. Mm. Um, it depends. If I'm not successful, that's a very big... Um, uh, th there's Ooh, a very big but. Uh, no, okay, the, yeah. the point is, okay, maybe I, if I'm not successful, it depends mm. on what. What percentage of votes have I got? Mm. Uh, what, how much have I propagated myself as a message? Mm. What's on? So everything I do depends on that. Mm. I might be unsuccessful, but maybe I got 48% um, uh, mm. and the winner got 50. Um, so that's th that makes it a whole new different ball game. Mm. But I might be unsuccessful and let's say I got, uh, okay, I will not say, but a small figure. Mm. So everything depends on that. So wha right now my focus is making sure I get as much as possible and of this message. Uh, and I win as much as possible of this message out there to mm. get people to vote for me and I win now. What happens after that depends on the nature of the... Of, of, you know. As we're finalizing this conversation, your last word to the Ugandans on board, just give them your last word, your parting shoots, mm. and we could call it today Your Excellency in Waiting. Um, uh, the, my last word is I, I, I just want to request all Ugandans to go and vote for the issues. I want you to see the correlation between your vote and your life. Mm. Do not just think about, um, you know, uh, I'm voting for this or the, the other reason. The thing has got to be about yourself. Mm -hmm. And votes are very personal issues. And now, the, the, your vote is a statement mm -hmm. more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Even when it is, I mean, um, it's a statement that this is what I believe in. Mm -hmm. And that has got to be the thinking. Because this is w we are going forward. Mm -hmm. Because you see so many people think about elections in this Museveni era. It's mm -hmm. going to come, it's coming to an end. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Kableta is not thinking about elections in this Museveni era. I'm thinking about elections when they are actually in a democratic era, when people are discussing issues and so on. So we have to be futuristic in our mm -hmm. thinking mm -hmm. if we are actually going to reach there when we are ready. Mm -hmm. Because what if Museveni goes now? Are we ne of necessity ready for a life after him? Mm -hmm. And he's going to go. Now, the thing is, I am thinking futuristically. I'm thinking about the Uganda I'm bringing my children into. Mm -hmm. What kind of country do I need? So your vote is your statement of what you believe in as a person, mm. what your intent is as a person. So mm. I want you to go and vote for me mm. if you think that my issues mm. can affect you if I am the winner. And you say now, okay, may, he may or may not be the winner, let's say, mm. because you know it's a, and it's a, it's a, it's a lottery out there. Mm. But if he was the winner, I would want him to be the winner because I know now that is going to affect my pocket. So my presidency will be felt in everybody's pockets. Everybody who is listening to me right now, mm. the, my presidency, they will feel it in their pockets, in their wallets, and they will feel an earthquake in their wallet. 
And I, I get, let them just give me st- six months. In six months, they will feed an earthquake in their one. So as soon as you hear Kablata has been sworn in, mm. Um, start counting, and then after start touching your wallet. Six months. Uh, start touching your wallet. You will mm. feel an earthquake there, and then you know Kableta <laughs> has arrived. Whether you see me or not, I might be somewhere in Entebbe, mm. but uh, and you may be in uh, in a beam district. A beam. Mm. But as long as your wallet is shaking, mm. no Kableta is there. Whether you see me or not. Thank you so much. That is a pres- an independent presidential candidate, Joseph Kableta. It has been quite a very interesting conversation. Mm. Thank you so much. Those questions that came through Twitter and Facebook. It has been very remarkable. Now, my colleague uh, Ivan Kamana Walunyolo in Entebbe spoke to the women who are vying for positions. It's quite very tedious there. The campaigns are tense, but it's a very remarkable conversation. Ivan.